Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. A powerful cold front is moving across the country, producing severe weather. I'll show you when to expect it and what our severe weather threat is. And there are some changes coming to RDU. The growth at the airport has one airline changing terminals to give it enough room for new flights. And tonight is the Durham Bulls home opener coming up. What there, what new things there are for fans this season. We now know all the teams that will be joining NC State's women in the final four in Cleveland. Among them, superstar Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Redemption for them taking down LSU and Caitlin Clark's college career extended for a little bit. Good morning, everybody. It is six o'clock. Great to have you with us as we get you caught up on what you need to know for Tuesday. I'm Renee Chu and I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for making us part of your Tuesday here as we look ahead towards what's happening today. I mean, busy week with Dreamville mm -hmm. Fest, the end of the week here and uh, lots going on. Lots of travel involving our final four teams as well. Elizabeth Gardner in the WR Severe Weather Center right now. We have that severe risk moving into our area. today. So today we're going to end up with a fairly quiet day. It's going to be a breezy we're going to see cloud cover and then very early, early tomorrow morning, we get into this level one risk and of course back to our west is level two and eventually even level three. Let's take a look at where the system is right now and we'll jump on out and uh, take a look here. Overnight, we had a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings. We had tornado warnings and uh, a lot of watches as well. Right now, it's just concentrated here uh, just south of Chicago around uh, St. Louis uh, right here in the Midwest and that will continue to slide off to the east. But it will build in intensity as it moves eastward, but it doesn't arrive here until tomorrow. Here's what we'll end up seeing today. Mostly cloudy skies, maybe a little sunshine peeking through from time to time and way out ahead of the front. A quick sprinkle could pop up. We really don't see a whole lot of rain until early tomorrow morning, say 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. It does look like a wet commute tomorrow. And then here comes the cold front closer to lunchtime. When the cold front comes in, that's when we'll have a better chance of seeing some severe storms, especially in our eastern counties. Uh, right around two or three o'clock in the afternoon is when we'd have the best chance of the strongest thunderstorm. So we do have a WRAL weather alert day for tomorrow for the afternoon for our eastern counties at level two and the rest of the viewing area at a level one. As you're heading out the door this morning, we're looking at mainly cloudy skies. Our winds are fairly light now, but will be stronger this afternoon. 68 degrees and it's muggy out there, you'll notice. A wide range in temperatures from 50s, Rocky Mount, Roxborough and South Hill to upper 60s in the Triangle as well as our southern towns as well. Our, uh, our forecast through the day today it's going to be warm again, 80 degrees by lunchtime. It'll be a fast warm up for us. And this will be the last day that we see in the 80s for this week. A big cool down, some 30s to show you in just a little bit. Brian. 602, Elizabeth just heard from Nick Perlin in the WRL breaking news tracker that that crash at Old Apex Road at Maynard Road in Cary has cleared in the past few minutes. Traffic is flowing freely through that intersection. Around the rest of the triangle, still looking okay on our major routes. No big delays coming in from Johnston County on 40 westbound. Also looking good in Durham right now on 885. It's clear in both directions between I-40 and the 147 split. Brian, thanks. This morning, we're working to find out the name of a man who drowned while swimming in Falls Lake. Crews responded to the Holly Point boat ramp just before 630 last night. People there say a man was spending time with friends on the lake when he decided to jump in for a swim. He didn't come back up. Crews from several fire departments and other agencies searched the murky water using an underwater drone. They found the man's body just before 10 last night. They're working to notify family before they release his name. Sunnybrook Road in Raleigh is back open this morning after a crash left one person dead and two others hurt. Crews cleared that scene about 12.30 this morning. This was the scene when the WRL breaking news tracker got there last night. Two cars were involved. Police say one of the people who's hurt has serious injuries, but they're not believed to be life-threatening. Breaking news. World Central Kitchen says it is pausing its aid operations in Gaza after an Israeli military strike killed seven members of its team. This is video of two of the victims from just last week. Australia confirms the woman you see in this video was from that country. The team from World Central Kitchen was in Gaza making meals for people. Other victims include people from Poland, the UK and Palestine, as well as a dual U.S.-Canadian citizen. World Central Kitchen founder Jose Andres posted to X saying he is heartbroken. He added that, quote, the Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing. 
The White House says it is urging Israel to investigate what happened. More changes are coming to RDU. Your next Breeze flight will be out of Terminal 1. It's the latest move because of growth at the airport. WRIO's Laura Levine is live at RDU this morning. And Laura, the airport has added dozens of new flights and destinations in recent months. <laughs> Absolutely. Good morning, Jeff. Listen, if you're planning to book a trip with Breeze, maybe you want to head to New Orleans. Uh, the next flight out of here is tomorrow morning. And if you're flying Breeze, well, you're going to have to come here to Terminal 1 instead of Terminal 2. Behind me, you can see that there is still an ongoing process here. The airport is working on updating signs this morning as it moves Breeze to this new terminal. But this is where the airline will be stationed for back checks next to Avelo and Spirit. Uh, RDU says the move is being being made to maximize gate space in both terminals, accommodate the airline's needs, and to prepare for continued growth. 15 new flights will launch later this month, and it's been a busy year, as you've mentioned, of growth for RDU. The airport added four new airlines, 25 new destinations, 49 new routes, and set a record for passenger traffic. So if you have a breeze flight this week, you want to be sure to check in with the airline if you have any questions regarding where to go for back checks as well as gates. Uh, Laura Levine, WRL News, we're live at RDU. And breaking right now in the WRL Live Center, firefighters in Boston are fighting a six alarm fire. This is a live look at the scene this morning. You can see that large response. We've learned that the fire began just after five o'clock this morning in one large multifamily building. It has since spread to the home next door and also an adjacent building. Boston Fire has confirmed all members responding to the fire have been ordered out of that structure right now. Uh, we are unsure of any injuries. We are unsure of how many people may be inside these buildings right now. Uh, but you can see still the heavy smoke billowing from the roof. Uh, this is breaking news. We will keep you updated as soon as we learn any new information. Michelle, thanks. We are just four days away from one of North Carolina's largest music festivals. This morning at 11, we'll get an update on plans for the Dreamville Festival in Raleigh. Crews are busy transforming Dick's Park for the festival. Video from Sky 5 shows the construction that has started on those stages. The park will be completely closed to the public later this week. Today, festival organizers and the city of Raleigh are holding a news conference to talk about preparations and what festival goers need to know. WRAL will be there. The news conference comes after organizers announced a major lineup change. Chris Brown will no longer be performing at Dreamville this year. Brown has been replaced with 50 Cent. Organizers confirmed to WRL Brown was unable to for perform because of unforeseen circumstances. There are still Dreamville tickets available. Tonight, you can give your opinion on the Wake County School Superintendent's $2.2 billion budget proposal. The school board will talk about that proposal in a work session this afternoon. A public hearing will follow this evening. The proposal includes $58 million additional dollars from the county. The superintendent says that money is needed to maintain existing personnel and services that can no longer be federally funded. The work session starts at 3.30 this afternoon and the public hearing will be held during the regular meeting at 5.30. We're only about 12 hours away from the return of baseball to Durham. The Bulls home opener gets started at 6.35 tonight. WRL's Kelsey Coffey is live at the DBAP this morning. And Kelsey fans will have a lot of new options to check out when they visit the stadium this season. Renee, they sure will, and the DBAP will be full of people uh, tonight for the game. And you can see that there's a brand new field that uh, the Bulls will be playing on this season. Tonight's uh, tickets were, are already selling fast, so check out this quick look at Fan Fest last week. The team has been practicing ahead of tonight's game against the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. New food and beverage options will be available at the stadium. The focus, aside of winning tonight's game, will be creating an unforgettable fan experience and come here, have fun, and smile, uh, you know, kind of forget about their worries and things they got going on in their day-to-day. -day. Hey, we're here at a baseball game. Let's get a cold beverage. Let's get a hot dog. Let's bring the kids and family. Let's have a good time. And it's always a good time. Tickets are still available. So if you want more information, just head to our website, WRL.com. Doors open tonight at 530, and the game starts at 635. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Durham.
We now know all the teams that will be joining NC State and South Carolina in the women's Final Four. Last night, UConn earned its spot in the Final Four with a win over USC. Huskies knocked off the Trojans by a score of 80-73. to It's now the 23rd time the UConn women have made the Final Four. And UConn now joins NC State as schools with both their men's and women's teams in the Final Four this year. The Huskies will be playing Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes in their Final Four matchup. Clark scored 41 points to lead the Hawkeyes past LSU in the Elite Eight last night. 94-87 the final. This was that big rematch of last year's national championship game showdown between Clark and LSU star Angel Reese. Iowa and UConn will play Friday night in Cleveland. WRL's Brett Nace will have coverage beginning today from Cleveland, Ohio for the women's Final Four. We now know that NC State will play South Carolina at 7 p.m. on Friday. So go ahead and make your plans accordingly. For the men's Final Four matchup, NC State will play Purdue on Saturday at 6.09. WRL's Casey Hintz and Pat Welter will be in Phoenix and provide live coverage starting tomorrow. And as the teams move on to their final four destinations, fans are clamoring to get some of that new Wolfpack swag. But then they just keep winning, keep winning. Yeah, the team's official shop is working hard to keep the shelves stocked. An outbreak of severe weather in Oklahoma and other states. The storm system causing tornadoes and other damaging weather there. And, of course, we're tracking that same system. It is likely to bring us some severe storms tomorrow. So tomorrow is a WRL weather alert day. I'll walk you through the timeline and show you what you'll see where you are. As you get into your car, tune to WRL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. We're tracking a front that's going to bring us uh, the potential for some severe storms late tonight into the first half of the day tomorrow. So we do have that level one risk that uh, is with us early, early tomorrow morning. And then, of course, uh, becomes a level two risk for our eastern counties during the afternoon tomorrow and our level one uh, for the remainder of the viewing area. And we're going to walk through the timeline coming up. But let's take a look at where that system is right now. It has produced a lot of severe storms along this front right now. It's a little quieter, but all uh, up here in parts of the Midwest where we still do have a tornado watch, some tornado warnings, and severe thunderstorm warnings. So if you're headed out today, we're going to see mostly cloudy skies, a little sunshine during the afternoon, one more day with highs in the mid 80s. Brian? 614 right now, Elizabeth. Just check with Raleigh 911. We're not getting any reports of crashes anywhere in Wake County. Also still looking quiet in Durham, Chapel Hill, and Hillsboro. As we take a look at those major approaches into Raleigh right now, nice and quiet on I-40 westbound through Garner with no delays from 42 all the way out toward the Beltline split. We have a one-minute slowdown overall on 87 southbound coming in from Nightdale back toward the Beltline. As you come in from Durham, though, on 40 eastbound heading by the airport, no delays all the way out to Wade Avenue. Jeff. It was a pretty scary first day back from spring break for some Apex students after a hoax sent their school into lockdown. Officers searched Apex High School and didn't find anything suspicious or dangerous. Sky 5 flew over the school during the lockdown that lasted about 30 minutes. Some concerned parents showed up at the school when they got that alert. Classes, though, resumed as normal. The last survivor of the attack on the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor has died. Lou Conter's family says he died at his home in California yesterday. He was 102. He was one of 355 sailors and Marines who survived the attack on the ship in Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. 1,177 sailors and Marines who were on the Arizona with him died. Overall, there are 19 Pearl Harbor survivors still alive. The community center at Wake Forest Joiner Park will be back open today. It was closed yesterday due to a gas leak. Sky 5 flew over the park after construction crews ruptured that line just a little before 5 in the evening. The park reopened later on last night after the leak was sealed. Wolfpack fans could not wait to get their hands on new NC State memorabilia after the team's big wins. But then they just keep winning, keep winning. We came last night and spent the night, and we welcome the men and women's team back to, uh, you know, 
show our gratitude for their hard work and, and, and it's created a ton of excitement for the Wolfpack fans. We've been waiting a long time. If you're looking to buy your shirts, the Red and White Shop just got a new shipment of Final Four gear in last night. Check out some of this video from Oklahoma. Severe weather created funnel clouds like this one northwest of Oklahoma City. This is one of several funnel clouds reported in that area Monday evening. At least one briefly touched down. There are no reports of any injuries. That is Tornado Alley there. We have our own version of severe weather coming in, and Elizabeth Gardner in the WR Severe Weather Center to detail that today. Yeah, this is that same front that produced all those uh, uh, strong tornadoes across uh, parts of Oklahoma. It continued to push eastward overnight last night, continuing to bring some severe weather across parts of the Midwest and the, the, uh, the Deep South as well. Currently, we do still have a tornado watch. We have tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings ongoing in parts of the Midwest, and that system is headed our way. Take a look at the severe weather threat for today. Uh, it's a level four risk in, uh, from the Ohio Valley into the northern part of Kentucky. Uh, most of Tennessee, some of the deep south in a level three risk. Mountains of North Carolina and, and western North Carolina in a level two risk for today. Uh, that level one risk stretches just about to our viewing area. But we're not likely to see this rain picking up until very early tomorrow morning. So we're just sort of in the edge of it for today. Today for us will be mainly cloudy and we could see a few sprinkles. But it's it's really tomorrow that we'll see the bulk of this. And tomorrow we're under a level two risk along our eastern counties, along and east of I-95. And from the Triangle area westward, it's that level one risk. The level two risk area means we'd have a better chance of seeing some severe weather, wind damage, some hail or an isolated tornado. It's just a little lesser chance in the green shaded area. Here's what we'll see today. Starting off with cloudy skies, it's breezy and warm out there this morning. We may see a few holes in the clouds here and there. And at any point this evening, we could see a quick sprinkle that rolls through. But we do have the Durham Bulls home opener for tonight, and it does look like it's going to be dry. Our chance for any rain today is really minimal. Once we get past midnight, closer to 4 or 5 in the morning, we start to see some scattered showers. Could be a rumble of thunder, but we're more likely to have the chance of severe storms along the front itself. Here's 8 a.m. with some scattered light rain starting at around lunchtime. In the triangle, we could see a few of these storms producing some wind damage. And then we'll pause it right here. That's probably going to be um, our best chance of seeing any severe storms around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon in our eastern counties and then it sweeps on out. It'll be windy behind the front, clearing and turning much cooler. Uh, overall, we'll only likely see a quarter to a half an inch of rain with us. It's not going to be a big rainmaker for us. Today's breezy ahead of the front with some gusts up to 25. Tomorrow gusting to 30. Thursday behind the front gusting to 30 and gusting to 25 on Friday. So it stays windy for the next few days. And we do clear out in time for the Dreamville Festival, but we don't warm up much in the next few days once the front comes through. Mostly sunny 59 on Saturday and 66 on Sunday, but at least it'll be dry. Sometimes it can be a mud pit <laughs> over there. We do have a WRL weather alert day for tomorrow for that severe weather threat. And then some chilly mornings, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, all in the 30s with sunny skies in the afternoon. Brian? Just about 620, Elizabeth. Just checked again with Raleigh 911 in the past couple of minutes. They haven't had any new calls in anywhere in Wake County, so we're all clear with no crashes reported in Raleigh, Cary, Wake Forest. Over in Durham and Chapel Hill, we're also still looking fine on those major routes this morning. We'll take a look over on the east side of Raleigh. This is the Beltline out at I-87. That interchange all clear, not picking up any delays coming in from Nightdale. As you head out later this morning and any morning, remember you can listen to us live on the radio, WRL News Plus at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. The costs for a taxi ride in Raleigh may be going up. The price increase City Council is considering today that we that would be the first hike in nearly 20 years. And a special call to action for all people named Kyle. <laughs> you can help set a new world record coming up in What's Trending. <laughs> and here's a look at your winning North Carolina education lottery numbers. This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Home. One of the most talked about moments from the iHeartRadio Music Awards is an iconic duet. Brian Schrader here now with What's Trending, Brian. Indeed, Jennifer Hudson joined Cher on stage as she performed her big hit, Believe. Hudson also performed If I Could Turn Back Time as a tribute to Cher. 
She is 77 years old. She got her Icon Award at last night's show. Ah, and so deserving. You know, in her acceptance speech, Cher acknowledged that most of the people in the audience weren't even born when she you know, got started in her career as Sonny and Cher back in the 60s. And she talked about how her career journey has far, you know, has not been smooth at all, that she's had a lot of rough patches. She's been down and out, record companies dropping her. But in the end, she never, ever gave up. Never wavered, stands tall, looks great. That's right. Got her icon award. There mm -hmm. you go. Uh, calling all Kyles. You are needed in Texas. <laughs> the city of Kyle, Texas is trying again to break the world record for the most people with the same name in one place <laughs> at the same time. This is set for May 18th. Now, the record is 2,325 people named Ivan who got together in Bosnia back in 2017. <laughs> and I'll never forget where I was when I heard the news. Right. Uh, Kyle first went for the record last year, but they didn't have quite enough Kyles. Just under 1,500 showed up. Yeah, so they need more Kyles. Austin, Texas tried this, uh, called it the Ryan Rodeo, and tried to get a bunch of Ryans in town. Mm -hmm. They didn't set the record. So Kyle, Texas, it's just south of Austin, right off the main highway there on your way to San Antonio. They're going to do it at the Kyle Fair. Bring the Kyles in. Let's see if they can do it. I know a few Kyles. We'll have yeah. to tell them about this. Got a long way to go, though. <laughs> Brian, thanks. <laughs> Sam Hunt is coming to Raleigh this summer. He will perform at Coastal Credit Union Music Park on July 27th. It's part of his Locked Up tour. The country artist will release a new album, also titled Locked Up, this Friday. Tonight is the night. It's the Durham Bulls home opener coming up. What's new this season for fans? And I'm tracking a strong cold front crossing the country. It's produced a lot of severe weather back to our west. I'll show you when it arrives here and what we'll see. And there is a certain type of movement happening today at RDU as that airport is growing. The airline changing terminals today to give it some more room to operate as RDU has dozens of new routes.